city of San Francisco is known around the world for the Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz Island, and cable cars riding steep hills with panoramic views. Today, San Francisco is recognized as one of the most scenic cities in the world. The first cable car line opened in 1873, and by the turn of the century, eight private companies were operating 23 lines throughout the city. The lines running on Market Street belong to the Market Street Cable Railway. Each line was identified by a different color scheme painted on the cars. The blue cars belong to the Valencia Street Line, which became known as the Blue Line. Opened in 1883, the Valencia Street Line ran from the ferry terminal through Market Street and along Valencia Street in the Mission District. After the 1906 earthquake, the Market Street cable car lines were rebuilt as electric streetcar lines, and each line was assigned a letter or a number. The route of the Valencia Street Line was extended to Mission Street and Ocean Avenue and was renamed 12 Mission and Angleside. It was extended again in 1914 through Slope Boulevard to bring passengers to Ocean Beach at the southern end of the city. The line also took a new name, the 12 Mission and Slote. The route from the city center took passengers through largely undeveloped land along sand dunes and shrubs. But for many residents who lived far from the beach, a chance to dip their feet into the ocean was well worth the long ride on a shaky and creaky streetcar with wooden seats. After the San Francisco Municipal Railway, or Muni, acquired the 12 line in 1944, the Eastern Terminal was moved to Market and Fifth Street next to the popular Hale Brothers department store. At the other end of the line, car number 932 waits for passengers in front of the zoo on Slope Boulevard. The fender attached to the front of the car was intended to scoop up distracted pedestrians and keep them from being swept under the wheels, as this promotional film demonstrates. But the encounter with a 30-ton streetcar running at a higher speed might have inflicted to this volunteer more than the loss of his hat. On two-way streetcars, the fender could be folded up to discourage passengers from hitching a ride on the back of the car. But nipping the fender, as it was called, proved irresistible for thrill-seekers and freeloaders. In 1948, Muni purchased 55 buses from the White Motor Company. These buses were part of Muni's plan to convert most of its streetcar lines to bus and trolley lines. They also foreshadowed the beginning of the end of the streetcars, which were regarded as a traffic nuisance by the ever-growing number of motorists. The 12 line was discontinued in 1950, and its streetcars, among many others, waited their turn to be dismantled or sold off for scrap. Taking over the Slote Boulevard section of the 12 line was the new 18 Slote bus line. A north-south route along 46th Avenue was added to reach the Playland at the Beach Amusement Center and the Cliff House and Sutro Baths. The line ended at 48th and Point Lobos Avenues to connect with the 2 Clement streetcar line, which ran an east-west route to downtown and the Financial District. The 2 Clement Terminal was located in a wooden shed above the Sutro Baths. Today, nothing remains of the terminal or the tracks that once brought streetcars for a scenic descent to Sutro Baths. In 
In the early 70s, the southern terminal of the 18 line was relocated to the popular Stonestown Shopping Center. The line ran eastwards to Junipero Serra Boulevard before turning west onto Slope Boulevard. The line was renamed 1846th Avenue in 1982 and was modified to circle Lake Merced. The northern part of the line was extended to Geary Boulevard and took over the short route of the 75 Legion of Honor bus line, which ran from Geary to the Legion of Honor Museum in Lincoln Park. In 2009, the east-west run in the Richmond District was moved from Geary Boulevard to Cabrillo and Balboa Streets. The last change came in 2015 with the elimination of the route around Lake Merced already covered by the 57 Park Merced line. From our trip on the 1846th Avenue line, we meet our bus at the Southern Terminal on 19th Avenue near the Stonestown Galleria Mall and the San Francisco State University campus. The bus is one of 300 new Flyer Excelsior Diesel Electric Hybrid buses Muni acquired between 2013 and 2019. Its silver and red livery, introduced in 1995, is a return to Muni's original 1912 paint scheme. In a first step toward replacing its fleet with zero-emission battery electric buses, Muni added number 5002 to the 18 line in 2022. Manufactured by New Flyer Industries, the Excelsior model XE40 has a range of 258 miles on a full charge. At 40 feet long, it has seating for 42 passengers and room for multiple people using wheelchairs. The Stonestown Shopping Center, as it was first called, was developed by brothers Henry and Ellis Stoneson as a shopping and residential complex. Construction began in 1949, and the shopping center, along with four apartment towers and smaller residential buildings, opened in 1952. A few dozen stores occupied the original open-air mall. Among the larger stores were a Walgreens with a lunch counter, a variety store called Butler, a car dealership, a restaurant called the Red Chimney, and a grocery store. The Anchor Store was the Emporium, a department store also known as Big E. It occupied three levels and included a lounge for its shoppers. In 1987, a major renovation converted the outdoor shopping center to an indoor mall. A second floor was added, along with marble floor and a glass ceiling. It was also given a new name, the Stonestown Galleria Mall.
Lake Merced is the largest of the three natural freshwater lakes in San Francisco. Once the home of the Ohlone Indians, most of the land surrounding the lake is now occupied by three golf courses. From Winston Avenue, our bus follows the contour of the lake along Lake Merced Boulevard and Lakeshore Drive. Running in parallel with Lake Merced Boulevard is Gellert Drive. It was named after brothers Fred and Carl Gellert, who designed and built the houses bordering the Lakeshore neighborhood. These houses were called Sunstream Homes, and the Gellert brothers built thousands of them throughout the Sunset District, which was developing rapidly in the 1940s and 50s. The San Francisco Zoo was built in 1929. It was initially called the Fleischhacker Zoo after its creator, businessman and civic leader, Herbert Fleischhacker. The zoo is an addition to the Fleischhacker Playfield, which included a miniature railroad and a swimming pool. At a thousand feet long, it was the largest heated saltwater swimming pool in the world. It held occasional swimming contests with celebrity swimmers like Johnny Weissmuller and Ann Curtis, Helene Madison, and Esther Williams. Today, only the zoo remains from the Fleischhacker Playfield. After its closure in 1971, the swimming pool was filled in to serve as a parking lot for the zoo. At 45th Avenue, we come across the giant head of a wide-eyed dog wearing a bow tie and a chef's hat. It was created in 1965 by the San Francisco billboard designer Harold Backman for the Doggy Diner restaurant chain. The first Doggy Diner opened in Oakland in 1948, and the chain grew to 30 locations around the Bay Area. 18 of these fiberglass heads were made, including this survivor, which once towered over the corner of Sloat Boulevard and 46th Avenue. The Doggy Diner chain closed in the 1980s, but the diner on Sloat Boulevard continued its operation under new ownership and a new name, the Carousel. Who knew that these winds would cause such problems? High winds tonight brought down the 400-pound uh, doggy diner head at 46 and Sloat Boulevard near the San Francisco Zoo. Crews are working to remove the massive fiberglass statue, and it's attracting a lot of concerned residents and members of the Ocean Beach Historical Society who have been battling the city to preserve this beloved pop culture artifact that's been around for more than three decades. The damaged doggy head was restored in part by city funds and was declared an official San Francisco landmark.
Our bus now leaves Slope Boulevard and heads north onto 46th Avenue. The 18 route will take us in a straight line to Golden Gate Park. In the early 1900s, the western half of the city was still a remote expanse of sand dunes sparsely settled. The city was bisected by the big hills of Mount Sutro, Twin Peaks, and Mount Davidson. This chain of hills formed an obstacle for streetcars to reach the Sunset District. Landowners who had acquired large parcels of land in West Portal, Forest Hill, and St. Francis Woods financed the construction of a tunnel under Twin Peaks to bring streetcars to the area. The Twin Peak Tunnel opened in 1918, and the San Francisco Municipal Railway, or Muni, opened the L-Line in 1919 to run through the tunnel to West Portal and then continue to Terrebelle Street and Ocean Beach. In 1937, Muni extended the line to its current terminal on Wawona Street to bring passengers to the popular Fleischhacker Zoo and swimming pool. As we leave Wawona Street, we pass the iconic Ocean Park Motel. Built in 1937, it was San Francisco's first motel. Designed by architect Conrad Kett, it's an example of the streamlined modern style, with nautical pothole windows and balcony handrails. the tracks of the L-Line on 46th Avenue, our bus passes streets named in reverse alphabetical order from Wawona Street. Before 1909, the streets running east-west in the Sunset and Richmond districts were named A Street through W Street. To avoid confusion with the streets in the Bayview District, named A South through U South, the Street Naming Commission decided to replace the letters with names of Spanish explorers in alphabetical order. Reaching Terrebelle Street, we part ways with the L-Line, which turns east toward the Twin Peaks Tunnel. In 1940, sand dunes still dominated the landscape in the western part of the Sunset District. Originally called Outside Lands, the Sunset was a wilderness of massive sand dunes, some more than a hundred feet tall. During the gold rush, real estate developers began leveling the sand hills with steam shovels. But it was the expansion of streetcar lines and the availability of FHA loans in the 1920s and 30s that helped the large-scale development of the Sunset District. Major developers like the Gellert brothers and Henry Dolger constructed nearly 60,000 affordable single-family housing in the Sunset. By 1950, the sand dunes had been filled with rows of stucco homes. The sand dunes of the Sunset District were immortalized in the 1921 Hollywood film The Sheik, starring Rudolph Valentino. The film made Valentino an international star and Hollywood's hottest male sex symbol. His premature death in 1926 caused mass hysteria among his female fans. At Judah Street, the 18 line crosses the N. Judah Light Rail Metro Line. 
From its terminal two blocks away, the N line runs a parallel route with the L Terravel line to Market Street. The construction of a tunnel from Market Street was proposed in 1924 to run under Buena Vista Park from DuBose Park to Coal Valley. The tunnel opened in 1928 in a ceremony presided by Mayor Jane, Sonny Jim Rolfe. The new streetcar line brought new developments to the outer sunset. The last batch of streetcars Muni acquired was the PCC model from the St. Louis Car Company. 120 PCCs were added to Muni's fleet in the 1940s and early 50s. They were built to provide riders with a smooth ride and comfortable seating. As New York City Central Park was being developed in the 1860s, San Francisco was looking to develop a similar public park in the city. A square of sand dunes in the outside lands was chosen in 1870. The first task of Park Superintendent John McLaren was to plant trees to stabilize the shifting sand dunes. He then grew Irish bent grass and lupin to hold the ground together before introducing new species of plants and trees. The water needed to irrigate the park came from the Spring Valley Water Company, but the exorbitant rate the company charged the city for the use of its water pushed San Francisco to build two windmills to pump groundwater for the park irrigation. The windmills were replaced by electric pumps in 1910 and soon fell into disrepair. These scenes from the 1915 film A Jitney Elopement, starring Charlie Chaplin, were filmed in Golden Gate Park near one of the windmills. A streetcar appears in the background right before the scene cut. It belonged to Seven Hate Line, operated by the Market Street Railway. The Seven Line ran on Lincoln Way along Golden Gate Park and ended at the Playland Center on La Playa Street. The north-south section of the line ran on a dedicated right-of-way through the park from Lincoln Way to Fulton Street. This last section of the line was eliminated in 1944 after Muni acquired the Seven Hate Line. As early as 1884, the Park and Ocean Railroad train was bringing visitors to the Ocean Beach Pavilion for concerts and dancing. The pavilion also had a roller coaster called the Gravity Railroad. Other rides and attractions sprung up along the beach just south of the pavilion and the area became known as the Playland Amusement Center. It was renamed Playland at the Beach in 1926 by Playland's owner, George Whitney. 
Whitney, who also had an ice cream shop at his playland, invented the ice cream sandwich called It's It, which was sold exclusively at his playland shop. In the late 1930s, George Whitney and brother Leo expanded Playland to three city blocks. It was acquired by a real estate developer in 1971 and was torn down the following year. It was replaced by a complex of condominiums and a supermarket. At the corner of La Playa and Cabrillo Streets is the terminal of the 5 Fulton and 31 Balboa trolley lines. Both lines run parallel east-west routes from Ocean Beach to downtown. When Muni was formed in 1912, its first line was called the A-Line. It ran on Market Street from the Ferry Building and continued on Geary Boulevard to 10th Avenue. The B Line completed the Geary route to 33rd Avenue. It was extended in 1932 to run on Balboa Street to its new terminal at Playland. Muni's A and B streetcar lines were consolidated in 1956 to become the 38 Geary Bus Line. Westbound streetcar number 111 on the B Line passes the Alexandria Theater on Geary Boulevard and 18th Avenue. Next to the theater was Zim's Restaurant. With 37 locations, Zim's was the largest privately owned restaurant chain in the Bay Area. Art Zimmerman opened his first Zim's on Lombard Street in 1948. The limited menu consisted mainly of hamburgers, pies, and milkshakes. By the late 1980s, the popularity of counter-service diners was in decline, and the Zim's restaurants met the same fate as the doggy diners. After turning onto Cabrillo Street, our 18 bus follows the same route as the 31 Balboa trolley line to 33rd Avenue, before turning north toward Geary Boulevard. Before 2009, the Cabrillo and Balboa section was covered by the 38 Geary Line, while the 18 Line continued north on the Great Highway to Point Lobos Avenue, passing the Cliff House and Sutro Baths. Ocean Beach was a popular destination in 1903. Sutro's Cliff House, seen in the distance, was an imposing sight. But its years were numbered, as a fire burned it to the ground in 1907. The first Cliff House was built in 1863 as a fashionable restaurant for the San Francisco elite. Following its destruction by fire in 1894, it was rebuilt as an extravagant eight-story high structure by self-made millionaire and former San Francisco mayor, Adolf Sutro. Sutro built his own steam railroad to bring customers to his new cliff house. The railroad ran around the city cemetery and offered passengers a dizzying ride along the bluff above the sea. In 
1894, Adolf Sutro opened the Sutro Baths next to the Cliff House. But the popularity of public baths declined during the Great Depression, and Sutro Baths was turned into an ice rink. In 1955, a suspended cable car called Sky Tram opened to offer visitors a four-minute ride from the Cliff House to Point Lobos. Plagued by frequent fog and lack of interest, the Sky Tram closed after only six years of operation. The Sutro Baths followed the same fate in 1966 before a fire destroyed what remained of the standing structure. area with its spectacular views was used as a location in many Hollywood films. As a policeman arrives on his motorbike, we catch a glimpse of an 18 slope bus covering its route past the Cliff House. The bus was one of the Mack truck fleet Muni acquired in 1955. This survivor was spotted rusting in a backyard somewhere in Calusa County. The Richmond district was still sparely populated in the early 1900s. There were a few cemeteries, some dairy operations, and chicken farms. After the 1906 earthquake, which caused the destruction of downtown and the displacement of thousands of residents, scores of new settlers came to the Richmond district and transformed what was called the Great Sand Waste into real estate, and shops opened along commercial stretches on Clement Street, Geary Boulevard, and Balboa Street. At 33rd Avenue, we part ways with the 31 Balboa trolley line and head north toward Geary Boulevard. The frequent visit of the fog during the summer months makes the outer Richmond one of the coolest places in the Bay Area. While the proximity of the Pacific Ocean brings the mildest temperatures during the winter months.
the area of Lincoln Park was first occupied by a city cemetery. Called the Golden Gate Cemetery, it was established in 1868 as a new municipal burial ground. The new cemetery was built on a windswept hill at the western end of the city, miles away from the city center. It could only be reached by a road carved through the sand for local dairy and chicken farmers to bring their products to the city. In 1901, the Board of Supervisors banned new burials within the city limits, and the Golden Gate Cemetery was turned over to the Park Commission. City cemeteries were relocated to Colma, but in the rush to create Lincoln Park, only about 2,000 graves out of an estimated 12,000 were moved. The remaining graves were simply leveled over or destroyed, and the grounds were turned into a golf course. Our bus reaches the 18-line terminal in front of the Legion of Honor Museum. This was also the site of the western terminal of the Lincoln Highway. The original marker can be found right behind the bus stop. The Lincoln Highway was created in 1913 as the first transcontinental road for automobile, connecting New York to San Francisco. It was planned to open in time for the 1915 Panama Pacific International Exposition. As soon as the highway opened, hardy motorists and adventurous families embarked on their coast-to-coast -coast road trip. At an average speed of 18 miles per hour, the journey from New York to San Francisco was covered in about 30 days. The Legion of Honor Museum was opened as a fine arts museum in 1924. It is a replica of the French Pavilion at the 1915 Pacific Panama International Exposition. The French Pavilion itself was modeled after the 18th century Palace of Legion of Honor in Paris. The San Francisco Museum was funded by Alma de Bretville Spreckles, wife of the heir to the Spreckles sugar fortune, Adolf Spreckles. While still an art student, Alma became a local celebrity after posing as the model for the statue standing atop of the Dewey Monument in Union Square. During the construction of the museum, Alma ordered her architect to construct a secret burial chamber in the walls of the museum, with space for her and her husband Adolf, in spite of a city ordinance forbidding burials within the city limits. When the story leaked to local newspapers, causing a scandal, the Spreckles were forced to change their burial plans. The museum was featured in the 1958 film Vertigo, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, starring Kim Novak and James Stewart. Our bus now leaves us to explore Lincoln Park. Whether it's a visit to the Legion of Honor Museum walk along one of the coastal trails above steep cliffs with spectacular views, or a round of golf in a challenging 18-hole public course, be sure to stop for lunch or refreshments at the canteen in the nearby VA Medical Center. 
With a balcony view over the ocean and the Marin headlands, the canteen is one of San Francisco's best kept secrets. From the Stonestown Galleria Mall and Lake Merced, along Ocean Beach and Golden Gate Park, and to Lincoln Park, the 1846th Avenue line will take you along one of San Francisco's most scenic bus routes.